Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to talk about the website server on Mountain Lion Server and how to use this service to get websites going. Now, because I've been talking a lot about using server for home users, uh, there's a few things that I want to kind of talk about before we talk about the websites. Um, first off is the fact that Mountain Lion has, Mountain Lion Server has a built-in website uh, that it uses in conjunction with the wiki service uh, that you can use as home users. And so it's a very simple uh, website interface. And let me just show you what that looks like. You can see here in the websites panel, there's a view uh, server website. Let me just click that for a second. And this is what the website uh, looks like. And so it's a very simple um, website. You can set up uh, you know, security on it so that uh, only your users can get to it. Uh, those of you that are using a dot .private address, in fact, you can just use it in your uh, intranet as opposed to having it out on the internet itself. And so this might be enough for you. Uh, you can customize every single one of the things on here. Uh, I'm going to go into more detail on it uh, when I talk about the uh, wiki service uh, later. But I wanted to show you this option because for some of you this just, this just might be enough. So let me just uh, pop that down. Uh, now, if you still want to do your own service, you, you have software that you want to create your uh, website with, maybe you've used iWeb in the past, or maybe RapidWeaver, or one of those type of programs, and you really want to try hosting it yourself, uh, there's a few things that you need to consider before you do that. Uh, the first thing is downtime. Uh, and now, when you're hosting a website, uh, one of the things we take for granted is that that website is always up and available. And that's why we go to many hosting services, because they have their servers up and running, they've got uh, people that are running those servers, they have redundancy and stuff like that, so their uptime uh, is going to be very frequent. For you, if you're hosting your website uh, from your home uh, or for your business, and you turn your server off or your server goes down, your website comes off the web as well, and so that can cause you some problems uh, with that as well. So that's why a lot of people will go with a domain uh, host to host their website. Uh, I personally do that. I don't host a website on my server for that reason. A uh, second thing you need to consider is whether or not your uh, internet service provider blocks port 80. Because most of the internet uh, traffic comes over port 80, a lot of times your internet service providers will block that port because they don't want home users to host their own websites because they don't want the bandwidth issues and things like that. So you want to check that out. And then finally, you want to know, uh, see if you've got a static IP address or not. Because without a static IP address, if your uh, IP address changes because you're only leasing it and maybe um, you know when you've turned off your router or something, your IP address changes, all of a sudden now people can't find your website because it's not on the internet anymore because they don't have it linked to the right IP address. So you're going to want to get a static IP address if you're hosting your own website, which usually does cost more uh, through your internet service provider. That's why hosting sometimes is better. So those are just some things to consider uh, as, uh, as we do this, but I still want to show you how this service works and how to set it up if you want to do that. Uh, you'll notice right here on the websites page that we've got a server website uh, on port 80 and a server website SSL on part, port 443. This is the built-in website for server that I showed you before. And uh, it has all of the different options here. And let me just uh, show you real quick um, with the edit right here. You hit this pencil to edit the site. Uh, this is kind of the uh, inside of it. This is the default website. Now, something that's very important uh, is to keep these websites intact. Even if you don't want to use it, you want to keep these files intact because if you start uh, deleting them and things like that, uh, it starts to make the server unstable from a lot of the things that I've seen in red. So you're going to want to keep these files in place. Uh, if you want to know where those files uh, are located, you've got kind of the uh, you've got the uh, string up here that tells you where they're at, or you can click this little arrow right here, and it'll bring up a finder window and show you where those files are. And just like it says up here, it's under library, server, web, data, sites, and then default. And then here's all the default files that go with the website, and it's all put right in here. So let me just uh, pop that down so you can see kind of where that's at. Now the reason I showed you this is because for those of you who uh, are okay with the default server website, but you want a little bit of security on it, you don't want everybody to see it on the internet, you only want your users to see it, you'll want to come up here on the who can access area and you want to change that to whatever group you want to access it. If it says anyone, then that means that anybody on the internet can access the site without having to log in. 
and so they can see the things you put up there and that kind of stuff and a lot of times we you, you might not want that to happen so just select a particular group work groups usually a good one because usually all of your users on your site are in there and then that way only those people will be able to access it so that when you load your site a login window will come on uh, where they've got to log in before they see anything so I just wanted to show you that for security purposes because uh, that is a change they've made from lion to mountain lion so let me just cancel this for a minute all right, so let's uh, let's talk about what it looks like to add a website. A couple of things uh, right on here: you can enable PHP for web applications or Python, uh, depending if you've got dynamic things that you'll have running on your website. Uh, that's a little bit more uh, advanced, although you know you'd be surprised with some of the software you use. Sometimes they will use PHP uh, web applications, so you may want to enable that. So let's take a, take a look at what it looks like to add a website. So I'm just going to click the plus button here. That's how you add a website. And you'll notice you have a spot here to put your domain name, and they've given kind of this uh, example.com. Uh, uh, if you hover over it, it's, it, you'll notice it says the host name or IP address needs to resolve from this location. And so whatever you put in here needs to uh, be able to resolve from your internal DNS and your external DNS. And so I'll show you what that uh, looks like in a minute. But when you type this in, as you type it in, you see this little green dot here. This little green dot will tell you whether or not your website resolves uh, OK. Right now it's at a default, so it's just going to show you that. But if it doesn't resolve OK, it would come up with a, uh, with a red dot there, and that would let you know you've got a DNS issue. Now, your IP address, you can put that in here. Uh, you can put any IP address you want, or you can put one of the, one that you want to uh, schedule. Uh, normally, you'll be able to put any or your main IP address of your server, because everything's going to come in internally, and it will route it from there. Uh, you can make it, uh, you can change the port if you want. Uh, you can also make it um, a secure website by adding your SSL certificate to it, if you wanted to do that. Uh, so that would make that secure. Now, you can pick where you want to store the site files. Uh, you can set it to automatically create a new folder, or you can say Other, and when you click that, it just allows you to search to decide where you want to uh, put your website folder. So that's kind of nice that it allows you to store it wherever you want to, uh, instead of just in the default location that I showed you earlier, which you can see up here is Library, Server, Website, Data, and then Sites. Uh, so you can move that if you don't want it on the server. Uh, again, once we create it, you can set up who can access it, whether it's uh, anyone or, like I said, you can do some of your work groups and things like that if you make it secure. This will only open up if I connected the SSL certificate to it, however, because that's what makes it secure. Otherwise, it's open to anyone. You've got additional domains that you can add. So if you click this, you have the ability to add alternative domain names for this website. So for instance, uh, it might be www.school.com. Let's say that's your website. And you might also want it to, to resolve from server.school.com or house.school.com. And so you would put those other uh, alternative domain names in there. And so when people would put those in their browser, all of those would go to the same place in the same direction. Uh, you'll want to make sure that those things uh, are also set up on your external uh, domain registrar as well so that people can find them uh, outside on the internet. Uh, you can set up redirects if you want to. So if you've got uh, a certain website that you want to be the URLs to be forwarded to this website or other ones, you could set up redirects up there. Uh, you can also set up uh, other aliases, right? You have additional domains. You can also have your aliases and the same kind of thing. You can have um, different uh, folders on this server accessible via different URLs on the website. And so you can set up your aliases there as well. And then you've got your index files. And so if I click edit here, there's four index files that are automatically configured, just the defaults, you know, your index.html, which is your typical uh, main HTML file, then PHP if you've got it going, they've got wiki, default, those kinds of things. You can add whatever ever it is you want on there for your particular website. Okay, and then you just add those into that area. And then there's also an advanced settings area if you wanted to do that. Uh, that includes you can enable server side uh, includes if you wanted to. Uh, that's a little bit more advanced. Uh, you could do overrides with HT access files, which are basically hidden uh, files that determine who can access what. A lot of times they work uh, as ways to secure folders or files or those kinds of things. You could set that up. Again, these are advanced things that you'll need to know how to work in the background and with terminal to set up or within your actual uh, files themselves. Uh, allow folder listing, uh, CGI execution, you can use a custom area 
your page if you want to. Uh, you can also say make these web apps available for this website. And if, if you have web apps that you put in there for Python or whatever, those would show on here and you can enable them. Again, this are, these are advanced settings. If you um, are just doing a basic website, you really don't need to know about these. But I just wanted you to know that there were advanced settings here. I'm not going to go into too much detail on those. So when you're finished, you just click Done, and then your website should be available uh, and uh, accessible. As long as your uh, website is being published to the files where you, that you have up here, you're in good shape. So I'm going to cancel this because I'm not going to set up a new website, but I do want to say something uh, about DNS for a minute, just to make sure that your DNS is set up properly. Also, server does allow you to do virtual hosting, which means that you could have uh, other websites on here that would all use the same IP address, but they would route to different web addresses. Like if you had example.com and you had uh, school.com, uh, you could host both of those websites on your server with the same IP address and server would know which one to route them to depending how you had your DNS set up. And you just wanted to make sure that that was set up properly. So let me just look at DNS for a second. I'm going to click this and you can see this is uh, this is the DNS that we have set up here. You've got a primary zone, you've got a machine record and a name server record. What you would want to do is you would want to make sure that you had a primary zone set up for whatever your virtual domain would be if you have that. So if it's uh, school.com, you'd want a primary zone that's at school.com. Then you would want a machine record uh, for school. Uh, you would want a name server for record, which would uh, for school.com, which would basically be uh, whatever your main server name is, right? So if your main server is server.example.com and you're doing now school.com, your name server would need to be server.example.com because you want to point back to your main server to be your name server. Otherwise, you would then do a machine record for school.com and everything would then uh, be set and ready to go. And you could do that for various addresses. But you would want to make sure that your DNS is set up properly. Now, for those of you that ha are deciding maybe to host your um, own website, what you may want to do is, and if you've got uh, registered on the internet with a registrar, you've got like example.com, for instance, you may want your primary zone to be example.com instead of server.example.com, uh, just so that you can cover the gamut okay, of what you're doing. Uh, you would also probably want to add in here an alias for uh, www.example.com just to be safe uh, as you've set it up or like I said if you're doing a virtual host school.com. So I know I'm throwing a lot at you there but I just wanted to kind of let you know that if you're looking at doing some of those things this is where you would set those up. And so rather than just going screen by screen right here I can point it out and I'll put some things up there so that you can see that and see how that might lay out. So anyways, let me go back here. That kind of shows you how to set up uh, the website service. Again, it's a pretty simple service uh, once you get it going, um, but uh, it really is a neat way that you can use your server. Again, if you're a home user, I still recommend hosting uh, with an outside provider. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.